is the right hand rule? Um, the right hand rule is. Oh, driving the right hand. What's the question? In driving terms, what is the right hand rule? Oh, geez, I should know this. If you're two people are coming the same way, you stay to the right side. The right hand rule is that the person on the right side always has the right of way. Welcome to License to Drive. Understanding and obeying right-of-way laws is one of the most important concepts of safe driving. Deciding who has the right to use a certain part of the road when two or more drivers want to use it at the same time is not always easy. But right-of-way laws are based on common sense. They rely on drivers' patience and courtesy to be effective. When you give the right-of-way, in other words, yield to another driver, you are giving that person first use of the road. Where I live, there are a ton of traffic circles. The first time I went out driving by myself, I got stuck in one for five minutes. I swear, five minutes. There was so much traffic, I just kept going around and around and around. I just couldn't seem to get out of it. It was so embarrassing. I got the hang of it now, but it took a while. Thanks for riding over to Ellen's with me. It's more, you know, casual if we both drop by. No problem. But what if you two suddenly decide you want to be alone? <laughs> what am I supposed to do, take a cab? <laughs> it won't be like that. We're just friends. What's the next street I need to turn on to? When you get to the five-way intersection, make a left onto Elm. This must be it up here. A five-way intersection? That's kind of weird. Now, why doesn't that guy go? He was here first. I don't know. I guess I'm going to go. I don't have all day. No, and look out! Oh, oh this is impressive. <laughs> The first thing Roger did right was to take a friend along to navigate. It's always helpful to have someone come along when you're going to an unfamiliar place. Unfortunately, when they got to the five-way intersection, everything went wrong. The other driver clearly had the right of way. He was there first, and he is to the right of Roger. Roger got impatient and pulled out just as the other driver decided to go. This could have been avoided if Roger had simply waited his turn. If you ever encounter a situation like this, the best thing to do is not to be the one who goes first. Have enough patience to allow the people who are more confused and less skilled than you to clear the intersection. Driver 1 approached a semi-controlled four-way intersection marked with yield signs. Driver 2 was approaching from the left at the legal speed limit. Driver 3 was approaching from the right, doing 15 miles per hour over the legal speed limit. Driver 1 paused for only a second and then proceeded into the intersection without checking that the way was clear. Driver 2 was able to slow down in time, but Driver 3 was not and collided with Driver 1, who was at fault. Driver 1 is at fault. Just because he didn't have a stop sign didn't mean he had the right of way at the intersection. He should have thoroughly checked traffic in all directions, and since vehicles were approaching, come to a complete stop to let cross traffic by. Driver 3, however, contributed to the collision. Had he been observing the speed limit, he would have been able to slow down in time to miss Driver 1, just as Driver 2 was able to do. coming up behind a vehicle and they'll hear us and see us knowing that people in front of them are pulling over they'll accelerate they should pull over to the right and let us pass if an ambulance comes up behind you and there's nowhere there's no way to pull over to the right you could come to a complete stop and opposing traffic will stop and the ambulance can go around you to help remember when to give the right of way here are a few guidelines to follow 
First, at any intersection, pedestrians still in or near the crosswalk and vehicles still in the intersection always have the right of way. This seems pretty obvious, right? But what happens at an uncontrolled intersection or intersections with stop signs on all corners, with broken signals or flashing lights? Who gets to go first? In these situations, use the right hand rule. Drivers on the left should always give the right of way to drivers on the right. When entering a traffic circle, give the right of way to vehicles already in the circle. If you are already in the circle, yield to drivers wishing to exit the circle. Oh, and if you missed your exit, just keep going around until it is safe to exit. What does the yield sign mean? A, wait for the car on the right, B, wait for the car on the left, C, give up the right of way, or D, take the right of way? The answer is C, give up the right of way. What do you do at an uncontrolled railroad intersection? At an uncontrolled railroad, you, uh... You stop, <laughs> drop the roll. <laughs> stop until the railroad, railroad, uh, crosses. You wait, and you definitely stop. You look both ways, you listen, and then you go. Hundreds of deaths occur across the United States each year at railroad crossings. They occur mainly because drivers do not obey warning signs or signals. Or if the crossings are uncontrolled, they fail to exercise common sense. It takes about two-thirds of a mile for an eight-car train going 60 miles per hour to stop. Even if the engineer sees your car on the track, it's nearly impossible for him or her to stop in time. The result, most often, is death. I don't know why anyone would want to outrun a train with their car because you're never going to win. Uh, on location, the first thing you're going to find is bits and pieces of a car and most of the time you have to piece together the body parts just to find out what belongs to where. Uh, it's usually a tragedy, always a fatality, and uh, it's never a winning situation. There are two types of railroad crossings, controlled and uncontrolled. Controlled crossings include some combination of signs, signals, roadway markings, and crossing gates. Many have only a sign called a cross buck, which is equivalent to a yield sign. Uncontrolled crossings, which are found in some rural areas and industrial zones, have no warning devices. In either case, you must take certain steps to cross safely. First, observe all traffic controls at the crossing. If there are no controls, treat it as if it had a cross buck. Look left, right, and left again. Listen, roll down your windows, turn off the music or any other noise so that you can hear if any trains are coming. Once a train has passed, don't rush to cross the tracks. With all the noise of the previous train, you may not be able to hear or even see a second train behind it or coming in the opposite direction. When you are sure that no other trains are crossing, move across the tracks quickly and with enough momentum so that your car does not stall. And don't forget, even at a controlled railroad crossing, the signals or gates may be broken. Remain very alert. And never dare someone to beat out a train at a crossing. It's much more than just plain stupid. It's suicide. How long are you supposed to stop at a stop sign? Five seconds. Four seconds. You're supposed to stop at a stoplight for three seconds. Second? Like a second. I'm not exactly sure of the exact time, but you're supposed to make a complete stop. I was taught to say S-T-O-P while you're looking left and right and then go. 
Controlled intersections use signals or signs to regulate traffic flow. Traffic lights, stopping yield signs, and flashing yellow lights are all examples of control devices. Obeying the signs or signals, reducing your speed, and looking both ways when you cross will get you where you're going safely. Even though the light may be green, it's important that you be aware and observe the actions of the other drivers entering the intersection. When an intersection crash occurs, it's often a T-type crash where one car hits the side of the other car, and this almost always involves injury because it's hitting right where the driver is seated. It's very important when proceeding to the intersection to be aware not only of your actions, but the actions of the other drivers. The day my little brother died was the most horrible day of my life. He was the greatest little kid. The day it happened, Mom had to work, and I volunteered to watch James. We had got ice cream and went to the park. He loved to feed the ducks. He would squat down and talk to them. We were driving home from the park, and I was stopped at a red light at a major intersection. And when the light turned green, I went. I didn't even see the other guy trying to be his light. The police said he was going 40 miles per hour when he hit us. All I heard was James screaming. The car spun into a truck and James, James just got quiet. He didn't cry, he didn't call my name. I was calling for him, but he didn't answer. I tried to get to him, but my legs were pinned under the dashboard, and I couldn't help him. The firemen got me out first. I heard one of them say the little boy was dead. I just kept hoping they were talking about some other little boy, not my baby brother. They cut away the roof of the car, and then they cut him out of his car seat. But he just laid there. He wasn't crying. He wasn't moving. He wasn't breathing. He just laid there. I'll have to live with the memories of that day for the rest of my life. Oh, I'm angry with the guy who ran the red light. But mostly, I feel guilty. I've asked myself a thousand times, why didn't I just look before I went into the intersection? I deserve to be in this wheelchair, but my little brother didn't deserve to die at the age of three. When you are approaching a controlled intersection, there are a lot of things that you have to concentrate on. Scan ahead. The sooner you spot an intersection, the more time you have to slow down, stop, or move into the proper lane. Is that green light stale? In other words, has it been green for a long time? Anticipate that it may turn yellow and slow down a little. Even if it's a fresh green, scan the cross traffic as you approach. Make sure that all traffic is clear before you proceed and that there are no pedestrians crossing against the light. What should you do if you are approaching a fresh green light? A, slow down, B, scan cross traffic, C, wait for a stale green, or D, give up the right of way? The answer is B, scan cross traffic. What is an uncontrolled intersection? An uncontrolled intersection? Lacks lights. Power went out for the lights. When there was no electricity. Uh, lacks stop signs, any kind of device. There's no stop lights, there's nothing but stop signs. I guess where it has no stop signs or no lights, that's an uncontrolled intersection? An uncontrolled intersection lacks any form of control. There are no signs or signals to regulate traffic. Uncontrolled intersections are usually found out in the country or the suburbs but they can also be entrances 
and exits for shopping centers. These intersections require your extra attention. One time I was going to go meet my uh, girlfriend's parents for the first time. I didn't really want to meet them and I was kind of nervous. So I decided to just take a long way there, which is going through this little neighborhood area sort of thing. And I was going through this crossroads and there weren't any signs or lights or anything. So I was just going to uh, drive right through it. But then all of a sudden this little kid on a bike came out and I almost hit him, but I braked just in time. But it was real close. So every time I go through there now, I'm just always thinking to like always look around, see if anybody's coming out and just slow down when I go through there. Want to stop and get some lunch? Mm, as long as we're not long. We're supposed to be doing some shopping, remember? Uh, don't worry, you'll get a chance to spend your money. I'm starving though, I have to eat now. Oh, look at this fool, come on lady! Squeeze around here on the left, there's enough room. You think so? Yeah, why not? Things went wrong for Dara the minute she took Marilyn's advice to go around the car blocking her path. Even though Marilyn was trying to be helpful, her advice was dead wrong. The driver exiting the store was doing something very dangerous, holding up traffic to make a left-hand turn. Dara compounded the problem by trying to squeeze around her into oncoming traffic. A car crossing your lane, already on the road, always has the right of way, even if what they are doing, even if you think you have it, to avoid a collision. Driver 1 signaled for a left turn at the intersection. Upon seeing Driver 2 approaching the intersection, Driver 1 decided that he had just enough time to make it through the intersection before Driver 2 got there. As Driver 1 was completing the turn, he saw a bicyclist crossing his path from the left. Driver 1 was unable to stop in time and struck the bicyclist. Driver 2 then hit the rear of Driver 1's car, who's at fault. The bicyclist was at fault for traveling down the wrong side of the roadway. He also rode directly through the intersection without checking for cross traffic. Driver 1 shared responsibility for the collision, however. Even though he came to a full stop at the intersection, he failed to check adequately for other vehicles and pedestrians before proceeding. Uncontrolled intersections can be any point where two vehicles legally intersect. When approaching an uncontrolled intersection, reduce your speed. Watch for other vehicles, as well as pedestrians, bicyclists, or animals that may run into your path. Take it slow and be prepared to stop. What does a controlled intersection have that an uncontrolled one doesn't? A. Signals, B. Signs, C. Flashing lights, or D. Any of the above? The answer is D. Any of the above. You've learned how to approach controlled and uncontrolled intersections, and who has the right of way if two or more vehicles arrive at the same time. There's no question who has the right of way at a railroad crossing, right? The train is bigger and deserves your full attention when you stop, look, and listen. Red means stop, but green does not necessarily mean go. Be aware of the guy trying to beat the green light, and always be on the lookout for pedestrians, even if you have the right of way. If another driver is in trouble, the best thing to do is give them plenty of time and space to correct the situation. Never try to squeeze around another vehicle that is blocking your path, if it means adding to their danger or your own. Be patient, be alert, and be safe. 